Organizing Computer Files When you work on your computer with files, your hard drive and cloud drive are represented as being like big filing cabinets, like the one you see above. Inside each cabinet are file folders. You can name these folders anything you like. In a real filing cabinet, you could only put maybe 20 pieces of paper before the folder was stuffed full. In a computer filing cabinet, you can stuff a folder with as many files as you like. You can even put folders within the folders, as many as you like. When you move the folders around on your computer or rename them, you aren't changing where the file is stored on your hard drive. Instead, you're just setting up a system for finding the files that make sense to you. Your computer arranges your files and folders in this order. Any name with an underscore is at the top of the list. Next is any name with a number in front, and then come the file names starting with letters. Within those sections, the computer stores your files and folders in alphanumeric order. Now that you know how the file system sorts files, you can use this knowledge to arrange your files and folders in a way that makes sense for you. You can push important folders to the top of the list by putting an underscore in front of them. You can push less important files to the bottom by starting them with a Z. Here is the way you should store your files for your business. In this course, you are required to use this system. It helps you develop the skill of thinking about your business as a set of six processes, which helps you to organize how you think about your business. You'll notice that I use numbers to force the files into the same order that you build out the business processes. It's very useful to always think about your processes in this exact order. It makes it easy to find and store files. There is an exercise later that gives detailed instructions on setting up these folders. Currently, you are working on your executive process. In your executive folder on your computer, store all the documents that legally established your business. See instructions behind your binder's executive tab for directions. When you work on a project, you work with many files. Dedicate one folder for each project. This is valuable because when you need to turn your attention to other aspects of your business, when you return to your project, you can quickly get back into your work and locate all the files you need. It's also important for making sure you don't lose valuable intellectual property. Imagine creating a best-selling online course and then five years later, updating that course based on what you've learned from your students' questions and comments. After five years, your memories of what all those files are and how you use them will have faded. Documenting your process in a clear way through the folder names and structures will make sure you can locate the copyrighted intellectual property of your business. Often, you will have multiple versions of a file you have worked with. I often add a folder underscore old at the top of a set of documents and folders. Then when my list of folders starts looking cluttered, I will drag any outdated files up into the old folder. This way, previous versions of files are stored where I can always find them again, but they aren't confusing me. You could, for example, store only your current year's proof of insurance in your executive folder and then store previous year's proof of insurance, which you are unlikely to ever need again, but maybe in the underscore old folder. As you work on projects, you handle different files and copies of files. Sometimes, for example, you might have a good version of something you're writing, but then want to explore making some major changes to it and you don't know whether those changes are going to work out. You can save the good version and work on a copy. Instead of naming files things like new or copy, use file names to clearly communicate to yourself which version is which. I usually put that kind of information in all caps so it's easy to see and it's clearly not part of the actual file name.
Another good use of file names is when you are sharing files with other people and you want to make sure that they know what the files are for. For example, in this case, the Reptiles 101 document is going to be used as the basis for a PowerPoint. Jane is working on that, so to make it clear to her which file to use, it's right there in the file name. Do not use is another good thing to note. When you create a lot of folders inside of folders, it can be easy to get lost navigating through them. In the story of Hansel and Gretel, the children leave a trail of breadcrumbs so they can find their way through the woods. Your computer filing system has its own breadcrumb trail to help you navigate your folders. If you look up the top of this image from my file explorer, you can see that all the names of the folders I opened to get to this file are listed in one line at the top, separated by greater than characters which serve as arrows. This shows me exactly where I am in my complicated filing system. Just as I can use my browser's forward and back button when I'm navigating the internet, I can click on the forward and back button circled in red to navigate one at a time through my folders on my breadcrumb trail. In this case, the breadcrumb trail is so long that you cannot see my two product development folder on the list. But if I navigated backward, it would start appearing once there was enough room on the address line.